This is my reality podcast show. The podcast that allows you to tell your story with no questions asked. If you think you don't have a story, then think again. Everyone's got a story to tell. Welcome to my reality podcast show. I'm your host, KC. Now, um, please don't forget to share my videos, like my videos, and subscribe to the channel, leave comments on anything that, you know, you've heard in the video, you want to make sense of it, just drop a comment, you know what I'm saying? Now, today's video is about the ex-boxer from the UK, Kel Brook, who was recently stitched up by mates in a video that went viral, basically, of him snorting a line at a house party that he held in his home. So it reads, Kel Brook stitched up by mates, a snorting video goes viral, okay? So that's Kel Brook stitched up by mates as snorting video goes viral. Former world champion Kel Brooks was filmed snorting off of a table in a video that has since gone viral on social media. Mmm, okay, wow. The special one, wait, the special, the special one, hang on, don't tell me Jose Mourinho was there with him as well. No, hang on, it was... It was Oh, right, 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 right. That's Kel Brook's fucking name. That's what he goes by. The special one. Okay. Okay, I didn't know that. And I didn't know he snorted cocaine either. So that's two things I've learned about Kel. Okay. <laughs> oh. Right, the special one is seen taking an extensive line of white powder up his nose with the IBF welterweight title in the background. <laughs> Kel, it's your wow. title. Let me have a snort, mate. Okay. As Brook sniffed it back, there's even a photo of himself next to the paraphernalia. He then pretends to land a combination once the hit lands in his brain. <laughs> oh dear, and I've seen the video as well, it's quite funny man, I'm not going to lie. Because after, um, after he takes the line man, you know, you know the line just went boom, straight in his head like fireworks. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he just starts throwing these different combinations and that. It's funny still. Do you know what I mean? I don't know, like, you know that there's some fucking proper um, Colombian fucking cocaine, man. That's some Cuban, Cubana cocaine, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and shit, you know Scarface, the movie and shit, man. That's some proper Cuban coke, man. <laughs> oh, dear. It's a shocking clip to watch as... One time successful fighter is reduced to allegedly taking illegal drugs on camera. Brooks' team has since denied that the substance was cocaine and stated the Sheffield man did, did it as a joke when asked for comment. Has anybody seen my joke caught? However, it's been no secret to, the, to world boxing news and many others for years, Brooks outside of the ring's lifestyle did not match his chosen career. In 2007, Brooks got stabbed in the buttocks in a nightclub seven years. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> you know what? I'm not even laughing that he got stabbed in his back he's still. I'm not laughing that he got stabbed in his back he's still. But it's the way that these people word their things still. <laughs> That's what I'm laughing at still. I'm not laughing that he got stabbed still. I promise. I'm just laughing at the way they word it. <laughs> no, bugs. <laughs> he got stabbed in his bugs, man. <laughs> Oh, shit, I got, no, I got to start again, I'm sorry. <laughs> right, come on, take a deep breath, bro, take a deep breath. Let's go. In 2007, Brooke got stabbed <laughs> in his box in a nightclub. Seven years later, he was shanked in the leg and slashed on his arm in Tenerife. Raw. This guy's been through it, you know. And trust me, you got to rate him, you know, because he's still, through all of them adversities outside the ring, he still managed to win the championship and become champion. Come on, man. You can't knock this guy in it. 
I swear to God, I'm not laughing at it. the fact he got stabbed. I'm laughing at the the wording, man. They're killing it, man. <laughs> Both incidents were due to Brooks' party lifestyle that he's been unable to curb since entering the sport. To some, it's been a surprise that Brook made it that far in his career due to his ballooning in weight between camps. This time around, Brook has been caught red-handed with two reactions from startled fans over the incident. Brook stitched up. One is that Brook got stitched up by one of his friends. One is that Brook got stitched up by one of his friends who sold the video to tablets. Raw man, fucking hell. Listen, man, when you got friends like that, who the fuck needs enemies? <laughs> That's all I'd say. You get me? Yeah, and they're saying the other is that Brook is a bad example to youngsters who aspire to be world champions one day. You know, that's debatable, isn't it? Do you get what I'm saying? You can't say that he's not, isn't it? Like, when you're getting caught doing all them kind of things, you know, the people that are looking up to you, the younger heads, you know what I mean? They've just seen you beat Amir Khan the other day. Now, that's someone they probably looked up to, and then you've gone and beat him up. So now they're looking at you. If they wasn't looking at you before, they're definitely looking at you now. So there's definitely truth in that, you get me? But at the end of the day, you know what I mean? That you can't, uh, I'm not going to fucking um, hold judgment on anybody. And you get me? I'm sitting on the vents here. And get me? This is all public knowledge, by the way. Do you know what I mean? As I'm reading it off the internet. So <laughs> it's just mad, isn't it? You know that? Right? So the fact, it says the fact Brooke was able to enjoy success while going off the rails in between bouts is not the future of the sport. Ricky Hatton proved this when losing to Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao before retiring at the tender age of 31. Hmm. It's true still, you know. Now Ricky Hatton, he, you know, he moved up and started getting them fights in America and them proper world title fights and everything. And, you know, it's like he, once he come off the British soul, for me, it's like he couldn't um, manage it. In, 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 you know, in, in America and in, in, around the rest of the world, man. Do you know what I mean? It's imagine it's still, once you come to the British story, you find it hard. And now they're telling you why. It's the lifestyle that these men are living outside of the ring. You get me? That, that, that um, is contributing to their downfall. You get me? Inside of it. Where, where Ricky Hatton concerned. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's crazy still. Anyway, I'm moving on. It says, he returned for a fight against... Shevchenko, I don't know the man's first name, but I know the Shevchenko spelling because obviously there's footballers called Shevchenko. <laughs> <I'm guessing. laughs> that, that is his second name, this boxer Ricky Hatton fought. Right? It says Ricky Hatton returned for a fight against blah blah Shevchenko three years later, but lost. So this was after the uh, Manny Pacquiao fight. Okay? He retired, then he came back three years later to fight the Shevchenko brother, lost. Yeah, and now it says, his years of going out and drinking with mates ended his tenure before he could reach the Hall of Fame level. Okay, so see, guessing I was kind of right with what I was saying. You know, he was, he was up, he was up in his levels, but he wasn't quite there yet, innit? He was nice on the British, so Ricky Hatton, the guy, innit? On British so but you see when it came off the cell, yeah, it got a little bit sticky for these kind of men still. You know what I mean? And then we're seeing why now. Anyway, it says Hatton is still waiting for induction, which would have been a certainty if he'd gone on to win another world title instead of stepping away. Okay, so basically he's saying if fucking he'd have just kept going, like um Probably when, when he took the gap in it and retired, if he'd have just kept going. Yeah, yeah. He, he, and got maybe won another title, then he would have reached the Hall of Fame, you know what I mean? But oh well. So it got, man. He's still a big name in Britain, isn't it? And he's still had a good career. So he can't, he can't grumble, in it? You know what I mean? And that says, wake up call. For Brooke, his excuses don't wash with many involved in boxing who know the situation. Precisely. Hopefully this will be a wake-up call 
for the retired boxer who did who did harbour hopes of returning to the ring in 2023. Authorities will indeed be monitoring the situation if he decides on a comeback. Okay. Right, and that's pretty much it, you know what I mean, for what it says on that. Read up there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you know, I, like, I'm not gonna lie to look at Kell Brook and everything like that, like when because I didn't really, I, I've seen him like obviously throughout my life and one and two in his fights on his come up. I've seen little bits and bobs, but I never really followed him. You get what I'm saying? <coughs> Until the other day, excuse me, when he um fought Amir Khan because that's someone that, that I had followed from my teens and early 20s and that. You get me? And when I saw him swinging Amir Khan, getting ready to fight him the other day, I watched their face off from one and two. And I wouldn't have thought that Kell Brook was on that. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, what they're saying he's been doing allegedly. I wouldn't have thought that he was about that life. You get me? You know? And I knew, I knew he had a little wild streak in him. He looks like he's got a little wild streak, on him, streak in him, but I thought that was inside of boxing. I didn't really think he, he was like that kind of guy outside of the boxing one and two. You know, so yeah, yeah, that's how it go, man. Still, and this is it's all allegedly anyway. Do you get what I'm saying for the minute? You know, but yeah, man, trust me, it's mad still. It's mad, man. Like I'm saying, where man, man, man's had a party in his house, though. This is fuckery, still, you know, it's fuckery. Like he's had a party in his house, right? <laughs> Invited his people, them over, right? He's thinking, I'm in my house, everything's good. Like, I know who's in my house with me. I know these people. Like, I know everyone's good. I know we're all good. We're good. What's good? What's popping? <laughs> you get me? Man starts taking lines and everything. And then one of them bossy old filming, imagine that, man. Trust me. I'm at just when you thought you were safe. Do you know them way there? Like, it's nuts, man. <laughs> Like I said earlier in the video, man, you know, when you've got friends like them, who needs enemies, man? Who? Seriously. Like, it's crazy. The things people do, you know, just to get a little come up, it's fucking ridiculous. And I'm telling you, I bet you his friends ain't short of a few, Bob. You get what I mean? Like, they're still filming and take that video and sell it to the tabloids just to, to get money. Like, oh. And mash up a man's career, cut your bad man. You know that he was planning a comeback from what that video was saying. I mean, um, Read Up was saying, right? The right up. He's planning his comeback. You get what I'm saying, yeah? And somebody knew that, innit? And they thought, right, if I can catch him, do you know what I mean? Doing rear tear tear, allegedly taking the cold court ever. Allegedly, innit? If I can film him doing this, then there ain't going to be no comeback for him. So it's hating. Do you get what I'm saying? To be quite honest with you. Because now his comeback's 100% debatable. Do you get me? <laughs> and why? Because someone decided to hate on the man. Nothing more than that. Because like I said, I bet you every one of them cunts are not short of a few bob that was at that party. Do you get me? So, yeah. But I bet you the only person who's happy about this... Out uh, of everyone, is his fucking dealer. <laughs> he's stressed to fuck right now, yeah, and he's gonna be calling it on every five <laughs> till he finds out whether he's gonna be allowed back in the game or not, man. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> he's gonna be calling it on every five, mate. <laughs> so his dealer's the only one who's happy about all this mess, man. I'm telling y'all. Anyway. This is keeping it real short, you know what I mean? I thought I'd have a little little bit of bants with this story, do you know what I mean? And, um, yeah, thanks for listening to another episode of My Reality Podcast Show. Yeah, episode nine. God bless you all and take care to another episode. Yeah, peace. My Reality. My Reality Podcast Show is a platform that's set up for normal everyday people to come on and tell your story. Guests will send us a recording of their story and the most inspiring story makes it on the show. We'll also contact guests via social media, so look out for that. This is a brand new podcast, KC's My Reality Podcast Show. If there's anyone out there that wants to talk about their reality on this platform, Follow me on all social media sites. Another way to let us know you want to come on the show is to leave a comment on the YouTube page. 
with your social media details down below and we'll get back to you. That's all.